try every diet out there, but no matter what you do, the scale never moves. Now, scientists have made a revolutionary new discovery that can help explain why. They found that certain chemicals you come in contact with every single day could be contributing silently, stealthily, to those pounds you can't seem to shed. Researchers call these chemicals obesogens, more formally known as endocrine disruptors. They hijack the regulatory system that controls your weight to work against you. Obesogens promote obesity in sneaky ways by increasing the fat cells you have decreasing the calories you burn when at rest, even altering the way your body manages feelings of hunger. And they're everywhere. In the hormones and antibiotics in your meat and fish. In the pesticides sprayed on your fruits and vegetables. The additives in our processed foods. Lining your plastic bottles and cans. So what can you do to keep obesogens out of your life? Finding out? may be the only way you ever win the battle of the bulge. Here to help me make sense of how obesogens become endocrine disruptors, our professor of pediatric endocrinology at UCSF Children's Hospital, Dr. Robert Lustig, and editor at large of Men's Health, Steve Perrine. He's the author of The New American Diet. Dr. Lustig, let me start, if I don't mind, with some of the cutting edge work you've been done. And you're right there at the very forefront. Explain to all of us how this concept of an obesogen is dramatically changing how we think about obesity. Well, the standard thought process behind obesity is a calorie is a calorie. If that's the case, then it's diet and exercise, you eat too much, you exercise too little. Couldn't be further from the truth. There are biochemical forces driving weight gain. We know this now because no child chooses to be obese. The quality of life of an obese child is like a kid on cancer chemotherapy. Plus, diet and exercise doesn't work. Plus, this is a global phenomenon. This isn't just America. This is happening in every developed and developing country. So, so if I just be clear on this, well, a, you know, a, a child, an infant, if they're obese, it's not because they made bad food choices. So you're concerned there's something else going on. They're the canary in the coal mine that's, that's exposing all of us, by the way, not just kids, all of us, to an environment that makes it easy for us to get fat. Now, last week on this show, we talked about how much weight we have put on, especially women, since the 1960s. And I actually think the obesogens uh, may be a big part of this. This might be how they function. They dramatically change over a generation of two as the environment shifts around us. <laughs> See, if you talk a lot about obesogens, you've made your personal mission. If you could share with us a little bit who you think is most at risk. Well, the people we're concerned most with are, are children under seven. Uh, we're concerned about pregnant women, and we're concerned also with people who already have weight problems. One of the problems with obesogens is that these chemicals tend to be fat soluble. So the more fat you have in your body, the more obesogens your body can store, and that can trigger additional weight gain. Back to Lester. I just want to you know, spend a little time talking about how this actually happens. So explain, if you can, to our audience how an obesogen actually helps us put weight on when we don't want to. Okay. There are three organs in your body that are basically are the targets of these obesogens. First is your liver. So if an obesogen could make your liver insulin resistant, insulin is the energy storage hormone. When your liver becomes insulin resistant, your pancreas has to make extra insulin to make the liver do its job. That's going to raise insulin levels all over the body, driving energy into fat. Not necessarily what you want. Right. Or it could be working on the brain, preventing a signal from your fat cells called leptin going to your brain, which would normally tell you, you know what, I've had enough to eat. If you can't get that signal, you're going to eat more. Or finally, the fat cell itself. So we have a certain number of fat cells in our body but we have some cells that we can recruit to become new fat cells. Obesogens will drive extra fat uh, differentiation and therefore more fat deposition. So our liver, our brain, and our fat cells, and the one I, I gotta say that I'm most concerned about is the brain. I think it explains why some people always feel hungry. And you don't seem to understand why you're always hungry despite the fact you've eaten enough. And I know a lot of you are sitting at home thinking, well, why does this matter? Right? How could this possibly be my life? And I grew up this way, I'm fine. But I can tell you something, the chemicals in our environment today are not the ones that we grew up with. So I've got an animation that I think will help show everybody and really bring alive what's going on, at least in our opinion. So these, if you can, th you think about it this way. When you sit down and, and you grab something to eat, in this case, let's just think, think this is, it's a strawberry with some pesticide on it. You eat that 
food, and those chemicals get into your body. And as they get digested, they're broken down. And those chemicals, in this case, endocrine disruptors, like pesticides, go up into the liver, as that post had mentioned, irritate the liver. And it's going to the liver. Look at those blood vessels. And you see those little square chemicals? They don't fit. They're not supposed to be there. And they muck up how the liver functions, and that takes the fat cells. And obesogens, for example, grows those fat cells. See how they get nice and big and porky, and they fill the whole area? And all of a sudden, your whole body starts to feel the penalty because of this. Does this make sense? Yes. Now what I'd like to do is use a simple metaphor to try to explain how this happened in the first place. Because I think it'll help get more clear on the endocrine system. Welcome to the show. Hi. How are you? How are you? Patricia's going to help us today explain all this. And look at these three safes. Because I think it is a pretty accurate metaphor of what's happening inside of our body. We have glands talking to estrogens, making hormones, which are then talking to fat cells, which will then grow larger, okay? That's the system. Each part of the system has the code, the key, to unlock the next safe. You don't have the right code, you don't send down the message. All clear. All right, so Patricia, your gland, okay? okay? So, uh, gland opens up, and there's a combination in there. Yes. Go ahead, and grab it out of there. Now that combination is gonna tell the estrogen whether it's gonna turn on or off. So let's see if it works, okay? okay? Put it in there. One, two, three, four. Pound. And let's open up. So there's another combination in there. And that combination does the exact same thing. It'll give us a code. Go ahead and put that combo in there if you can for the fat. And what happens when you open up the fat cells? You make fat, right? Does it make sense? You've got fat. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how it's supposed to work. Because there are times in your life when you want to be able to store fat. What happens, what happens if instead of the gland talking to the estrogen, telling the fat to grow, instead, I've got a crowbar called an obesogen. And I take this safe and I pry it open. Now I bypass the other two steps. I made that fat and look at this. Now I'm making material in my body I don't want because I was chemically changed and how my behaviors worked. Make sense, everybody? Yes. All right. Here's your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, Patricia, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, the federal government is so concerned about obesity that it's one of the areas being tackled in the White House's Task Force on Childhood Obesity. So this is not just theory. Our government's worried about this. The Environmental Protection Agency has actually increased funding to study this. It's getting a lot of the policymakers concerned. So the, the main way you may end up with obesogens in your body is through the foods you eat. So if you can, let's walk over and look at some of the foods with the highest degrees of obesogens in them. And this is a, a, an important part of the show because I'm going to teach you exactly what you ought to be doing differently. And the action steps that we've been talking about right now need to be brought to life. So let's start off with high fructose corn syrup. It's the first on our list. Dr. Lester, you made this the cornerstone of your research. You based it, almost all of it on some of the basic insights you gained from this. How is high fructose corn syrup, in fact all sugar, how are they obesogens? Okay. So it works at two different levels. The first level is by working on your liver, by inducing that phenomenon I mentioned before called insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Fructose half of sugar, half of high fructose corn syrup, is metabolized completely differently from any other carbohydrate. And what it does is it makes that insulin resistance at the level of the liver, driving the pancreas to make more insulin so the liver will do its job, driving energy into fat. Now, that would be bad enough, but there's another effect. Because of the effects that it has on the brain, in terms of both hunger and reward, it makes you want more. And so it sets up a vicious cycle of continued consumption and disease that's driving what our current obesity epidemic and also metabolic syndrome. So I've had this discussion before. If I had the Corn Growers Association here, you know, people make high fructose corn syrup, they'd say, listen, the science isn't just about high fructose corn syrup, it's about sugar too. Are they right? Absolutely, it is about sugar. The point is, in 1900, a century ago, we used to get 15 grams of sugar per day. We are now up to uh, 90 grams of sugar per day. We've increased our fructose consumption by sixfold. The current American now consumes 156 pounds of sugar per year. That's got to have some devastating effects. What I'm saying, though, is it's not just the high fructose corn syrup, or is it the high fructose corn syrup? It's both. It's both. Because it's so cheap, it's found its way into foods that should never have had it. I mean, who ever heard of adding high fructose corn syrup to a pretzel, right. to a hamburger bun? 